there's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. Not a bird, not a plane, not even a frog. Just little low me, Underdog. There's Betsy and his buddy Julie, go, 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 first on the run. The stories of McBrag outrageous, no one could be more courageous. The hunter chased the fox, he tutors on the rocks, and then there's Underdog! 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 Speed and lightning! Lord of Thunder! Fighting all Simon Bar Sinister held Sweet Polly Purebred captive in order to lure Underdog into his Valentine trap. Meanwhile, Shoeshine was desperately waiting outside a phone booth. Yeah, yeah, so I said to him, listen, you can't talk to me like that. Who do you think you are? After all, I'm a citizen. Yeah, I got my rights, you know what I mean? So then he says, what? What? Yeah, 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 he fired me. Me of all people. Well, like I always say, you can't win them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine the knife that. Pardon me, sir. What? Well, I'm in kind of a hurry, and I was wondering if I might use the phone. It's an emergency. You got an emergency? How about me? I just got fired. Don't talk to me about no emergency. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some creep out here wants to use the phone. Hey, listen, Harry. What I want to ask you is this. When Polly's in trouble, I am not slow. It's hip, 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 and away I go. I knew it would work. Here he comes. <laughs> Underdog will fix you. He's the bravest, strongest, most wonderful hero in the whole universe. <laughs> Your admiration is touching, my dear. But when my machine gets through, he won't be brave or strong or wonderful. He'll be nothing but a pretty paper valentine in my hall of fame. <laughs> if you're a good girl, I might give you to him as a souvenir. <laughs> you fiend! You'll never get away with this! Simon says be quiet! Here he comes, boss. Good. You know what to do. Let's go. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. <coughs> Polly in chains, then quick as a wink. I'll use my strength to break the link. <coughs> It must be part of Simon's plot. I'll look inside to see what's what. Grab the lever! Grab the lever! Simon says, be my valentine! You did it, boss! You did it! After all these years, you finally got Underdog. <laughs> you don't look so tough now, do you, hero? Take that, and that, and that! <laughs> Old lacy pants. Shall I tear him up, boss? No, no. I'm going to hang him on the wall and use him for a dartboard. <laughs> that is, when we get back. Where are we going? 
call in the boys. We're going to take the vault down to City Hall and make the mayor my valentine. Okay, you guys. Pick up the vault and put it in the wagon. We're going to City Hall. What about her? <laughs> Handcuff her again. There. When she comes to, she can look at her favorite valentine. <laughs> No, for City Hall! <laughs> what an ignominious end for a hero of heroes. Who now will champion the underdogs of the world? Is there any hope at all? The answer lies ahead in our next exciting episode. Well, Chumley... The garbage truck should be along any minute now. Let's get back to our house. Uh, okay, Tennessee. Uh, you mind I should bring along this newspaper? Good idea. I haven't seen a paper in... Zowie! Look at that picture. T.S. Tiddlywink, a millionaire, and he looks just like you, Chumley. Uh, yeah, but he dresses funny. It says here he just left for a trip to Paris. Think of that, Chumley. While you sit in this ridiculous zoo, someone who looks just as stupid as you has made millions and is on his way to Paris. Uh, yeah, Tennessee, it sure makes you think. Maybe now you'll listen to me when I tell you you could get to be somebody. Be treated like a human being. I tell you, Chumley, it's time you started. Uh, yeah, it sure does make you think, all right. Where am I? Uh, who am I? I don't know who I am. Now, Mr. Tiddlywink, what are you doing here, sir? Uh, Mr. Tiddlywink? I thought you were on your way to Paris, sir. Uh, maybe I changed my mind? And those clothes, really, sir, we'd better get up to your office. You have a change of clothing there. Uh, yeah, uh, let's go up to my office. Meanwhile, Tennessee Tuxedo, unaware that Chumley was gone... Close the door behind you, Chumley. Chumley! Where are you? Chumley! Tennessee hurried to where he had last seen Chumley. Here's Chumley's hat. Oh, no. The garbage truck must have picked up Chumley instead of the last garbage can. I've got to catch that truck. Stop! Get off my motor scooter! Stop him! Call the police! But Tennessee was not to be stopped. He drove to the city's giant incinerator. Quick! Has the truck come in from the Megapolis Zoo? Ah, uh, yeah, bud. Where's the garbage they brought in? Uh, right up there, bud. But there's nothing up there but... But smoke! That's it, bud. All burned up in the incinerator. Oh, no! My old buddy, my... my faithful chum. <laughs> Years of friendship gone, up in smoke. I'll never forget you, old chum, old chum. <laughs> and so broken-hearted. Tennessee headed back for the Megapolis Zoo. But as he rounded a corner and came into Main Street... Chumley! Chumley! I thought you were gone! Gone forever! Uh, I beg your pardon, little penguin. I do believe you have made a mistake. Mistake? What's wrong with you, Chumley? And where did you get those clothes? Uh, please, little penguin, let go of me. Take your filthy hands off, Mr. Tiddlywink. He's not Tiddlywink, he's Chumley. I'd know that voice anywhere. Let me handle this, Mr. Tiddlywink. Put me down. Shall we go home now, sir? Uh, home? Oh, yes. Uh, the... That sounds like a dandy idea. Wait! Come back, Chumley! I know that's Chumley, but 
why doesn't he know me? I better go have a talk with Mr. Whoopi. And that's the whole story, Mr. Whoopi. Chumley has forgotten who he is. Well, my boy, if what you say is true, Chumley may have amnesia. Amnesia? What's that? Amnesia means loss of memory. Chumley may have injured his brain in a fall, and that could cause amnesia. Zowie! You see, my boy, our brain is very important to us. Our body would be worthless without a brain to make it work. How does our brain make our body work, Mr. Whoopi? Well, it sends messages to other parts of our body by way of nerves. If we want to bend down and pick up a stone, our brain sends messages to the muscles in our back. And then it sends messages to our arm and fingers so that we can reach and pick up the stone. Zowie, the brain must really be complicated. Oh, it is, my boy. Of course, in the case of Chumley, a walrus, the brain is not so complicated as it is in human beings, but it is similar. Let's take a closer look at the human brain. It's divided into three parts. First, there is the medulla. This part of the brain controls breathing and the beating of the heart. I see. The medulla. That's right. And the next part of the brain is the cerebellum. This helps to make our muscles move smoothly. I've got that. The cerebellum. But the largest part of the human brain is the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the part which makes us able to smell and see and hear. See and hear? But what about our eyes and ears? Don't they do that? My boy, even with the finest eyes and ears in the world, we couldn't see or hear at all without the cerebrum. And this is also the part of the brain which lets us remember. Remember? Then that must be the part that got hurt in Chumley's head. And that's why he can't remember. Exactly. But what can I do, Mr. Whoopi? How can Chumley get back his memory? Well, it might come back by itself in time, or another accidental blow on the head might bring back his memory. But the best thing you can do is to get him to the Megapolis Zoo Hospital. They'll know how to help him. Phineas J. Whoopi, you're the greatest. And so it was that Tennessee, after finding out where Mr. Tiddlywink lived, arrived at the palatial Tiddlywink Mansion. Yes? No, it's you again. See here, you. I've come to take Chumley, uh... I'm Mr. Tiddlywink to the Megapolis Zoo Hospital. Now, out of my way. Mm. It is my observation, my dear fellow, that you're the one who needs a hospital. Me? Why, there's nothing the matter with me. No, but I have a rather strange feeling, my dear fellow, that there is going to be. <coughs> this is a dangerous job, but Tennessee Tuxedo will not fail. Sooner or later, Chumley has got to come out of that house. And when he does, uh, I believe I shall take a walk. Mm. Now, mm. take it, take it easy, Chumley. This is for your own good. Uh, gee, Penguin, you're making an awful mistake. I am T.S. Tiddlywink. My chauffeur has told me so. Quiet, Chumley. They'll fix you up at the Megapolis Hospital. But when our heroes reach the gates of the Megapolis Zoo... There he is! Stop him! Get my motor scooter! Uh, look out, Penguin, you're gonna hit that tree! Oh, you wrecked my beautiful motor scooter! I'll have you washing pots and pans for months! Gee, Tennessee, what happened? What happened? Well, I was... Chumley! You've got your memory back! That crack-up cured your amnesia! Stanley, I'll wash all the pots and pans you want. It was worth it to get my best friend back. All right, Chumley, hand me those pots and pans. Uh, gee, Penguin, are you talking to me, T.S. Tiddlywink? Tiddlywink? Oh, no, not again. <laughs> I was only making a funny tendency. Uh, my brain is as smart as ever. That isn't saying much, Chumley, but there's no sense in taking chances. We'd better protect it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> The mighty hunter was ill. Uh, uh, achoo, I say, achoo. Well, I declare. Now I've really proven it. The hunter can catch anything, even a cold. <laughs>
word of the beloved hunter's illness had spread far and wide. Now, Horace, I say you take these fresh baked cookies over to your Uncle Hunter. But why in the cotton blooming world do I have to take the cookies? Well, Horace, that's just how the cookies crumble. <laughs> that's the joke, son. <laughs> I say. Merrily I skip along through the deep dark woods. Merrily I skip along. Aha! The smell of fresh baked cookies. My favorite food. And it's that fresh kid, Horace Hunter, carrying the cookies. Hmm. This calls for a little action. Merrily I skip along, skip along, skip along. Merrily I... All right, son. Just pull over to the side of the path. What did I do wrong, officer? You walk right through that red light. That's what you did. Let's see now. Your fine will be one basket of cookies. But these are for my uncle, the hunter. The law's the law, son. Now, if you'll just... The fox! The fox! Merrily, I skip along, skip along, skip along, merrily. Hmm. Looks like I'll have to get tough with that kid. Merrily, I skip along, skip along. All right, Tenderfoot, hold on there. I'm Two Gun Tornado, the wildest gun in the West. Now hand over those cookies, or I'll let you have it. Oh, oh, why, why, sure, Mr. Tornado. But be careful, there's a hunting trap set right behind you. <laughs> That's the oldest trick in the world. You think I'd fall for... So long, Mr. Tornado. Merrily, I skip along, skip along. Well, I guess I'll have to follow the old plot. I'll take a shortcut and get to the hunter's house ahead of horrors. I just hope I get there in one piece. Who, I say, who is it? I have a get well wire for you. Why, come in, son. Well, son, let me have the wire. Hmm. That wire was for the birds. Not at all, Hunter. It's all for you. A little around your arms, your legs, your feet, and that's it. This gag in your mouth, and you in the closet. <coughs> well, now I just hop into bed and wait for horrors and the cookies. Come in. Howdy, Unc. I brought you some fresh baked cookies. Gee, you sure look puny, Unc. Yes, my cold. You sound funny, too. I, I, yes, my, my cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm, something tells me things aren't just right here. Uh, tell me, Unc, what makes your nose so long? Ow! Uh, well, my nose is long so I can smell those cookies better. Uh-huh. And what makes your eyes so, so big? <laughs> uh, my eyes are so big, so I can see the cookies better. And your teeth, Unc. What makes your teeth so... so big? Why, you miserable brat! Aha! The fox! Still trying to steal the cookies. Yes, and I'm gonna get him, too. This... There, Mr. Fox. That ought to fix you. <laughs> so there you are, Unc. I'll help you out, and we can have some of those nice cookies. Well, I don't get it, son. How could all this happen just over a basket of cookies? Well, Unc, I guess that's just the way the cookies crumble. Hee-hee, <laughs> that's a joke, Unc. Pay attention. Once powerful underdog was now only Simon Bar Sinister's Valentine. And Simon was on his way to give the mayor and the city officials the same kind of treatment. The situation looked desperate. Oh, where, oh, where has my underdog gone? Oh, where, oh, where has he gone? <laughs> Champion of underdogs everywhere, Herculean hero of the world. Oh, what has happened? Has Simon Bar Sinister 
really won? The secret compartment of my ring I fill with an underdog super energy pill. You're alive! You're flat, but you're all right. Your ring. And the pill. But it's so flat, underdog. Oh, I hope it works. <laughs> No need to fear, Underdog is here. Oh, Underdog, you're all right. We must hurry to the officials at City Hall before Simon makes Valentine's of them all. If only we aren't too late already. Take over City Hall. You've tried before, Simon Bar Sinister, but Underdog always stops you. <laughs> Not today, Mr. Mayor. Today, Underdog is my Valentine, and soon you will be too. Put him in the machine, boys. Oh, no! What are you going to do? Can't anyone save me? Today, the city. Tomorrow, the world. Simon says, be my underdog. Underdog. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Get him, men. Stop underdog. How can we thank you? You've saved the city. Yes, the hero of heroes had done it again. The champion of underdogs everywhere had saved the city from Simon Bar Sinister. And so, once more, people could look up and say, Look, it's a plane. It's a bird. It's a frog. A frog. Not plane, nor bird, nor even frog. It's just little old me. Un uh <laughs> Underdog. Oh. 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 Oh.